Howdy guys! Let's fire some games, let's fire some flushes. Today we'll run $50 stakes, we'll hunt for regulars. However, playing regs on flushes versus regs you could call. It's definitely pretty hard to gain the edge on shallow stack and the edge is rather uh, built over larger sample size rather than singular game so we'll just have fun with them right we got cranky what's up cranky high five uh, we've got dynamite dynamite who is on two tables so most likely a regular guy um opening button we just call totally okay with that min betting the left let's fire bigger but why not if we bottle definitely we'll pick a bigger size so i think 4.5 is definitely fine one bb with our king and jack pretty cool kickers if we hit these for sure our opponent gonna bottle we got pretty uh high kickers so we're okay with that against one bb i'm cool especially that eight high board you know frequently the turn will bring um nine and below which rather hits our range so i don't expect lots of bottles on these i think Calling versus one would be sounds okay. Okay, we've got lots of uh, draws on the turn. At the same time, mm, Queen hits our opponent's range. Uh, however, Button has more ace highs, which are under bluffed. So um, I think it's better to fire uh, by ourselves and get some value from ace tens, ace eight, ace seven, ace six. That might just check the turn. I'll use smaller sizing as you can see because I want to kind of um, maybe not like cap our range but definitely not look as strong as most of people would believe. Jabbing the river, lots of missed draws, I wouldn't be surprised to get calls from ace highs, so I'm totally okay with that. Uh, Key doki. Okie dokie, okie dokie, another game. We would need to play several thousand games versus these guys to, you know, reach the long run. Um, but still, the money comes from games that are versus randoms, versus, uh, versus fishes, who, who are far from playing perfectly. Let me just review this hand if... If I miss something, okay, so there was an just jam from around just all good, all good, nothing spectacular. I don't know the guy, I'm not sure if he's a recreational or regular. And still, the fact that someone is zero or one, black or white, it's not how you make money by describing someone as this or that, but rather by picking his specific tendencies. And this is what we want to observe. So uh, singular showdowns and statistics, right? As you can see, I haven't played much uh, versus these guys, so I have no idea what they do, how they react, uh, what are their tendencies. Mm, so I need to be observant. I need to notice showdowns, right? If if I miss something because I was focused on another table, run the replayer and uh, and, and check it out, right? So let's uh, let's go. Let's play. Just two tabling, however, those who watch probably would prefer having at least eight. But I won't give you this pleasure and we'll just play two tables and you will just skip, just click the right button, oh, next, next, next spot. Maybe you will see something, uh, something new, something spectacular. But actually playing flashes is less about spectacular plays, it's more about frequent, slight things. Or maybe it's about being patient. It's about seeing someone being going a C bet and then he checks, right? Like this. For example, if someone C bets Jack Deuce on this board um, without without a diamond, I think this is a bit too too wide. So um, this guy's C bet might be too high. So right now, after one hand, we could make an adjust uh, and and um, and run some semi bluff check raises and simply. Um, when he bets and and, 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 and and yeah, so see bet too wide. 
Uh, one BB on the turn, definitely lots of single card draws to value bet. So I prefer doing that and to go to the showdown. Do we have showdown value here? There are some straights, I'm not sure if they would fold. There are diamonds for sure that might not fold. I think I'll, on such a hand, if the river would be deuce of diamonds, I think I would be more likely to just check. If it's a four, so lots of opportunity to put the pressure on both single pairs and uh, even straights, I'm cool with with that. 9BB limp, I think both checking and Isa shuffling it's okay. If we Isa shuffle, if it's a random guy, very rarely, very rarely we'll get value from Mm, very rarely will get value from weaker hands. So checking allows our opponent to, you know, see the flop and basically play next hand with um, with some random hands. Uh, bottle on the turn, pretty thin. I mean, there are some ace highs in small barn range, maybe not that much. There are more random bricks in our range. I don't expect bottles with king high, so I think I'll just call. Uh, especially that his seabed range is probably 100% on the flop, so I think we're still okay with the queen high. And he battles this turn, I mean, come on, it's 7 or kind of nothing, there's some pocket burst. Okay, maybe triple battle, calling triple battles is a bit too much, I think calling twice is okay. I would need to his, see his tendencies and then I'll decide. One BB delay on such a structure sounds like a crap to be honest um, but without equity I'll give it up it's rather information for me for next hands to adjust accordingly if he uses larger or smaller sizings obviously the guy could be balanced and also bet nuts with small sizings but most of the time uh, people are not that uh, balanced so um, I prefer not leveling myself especially that if you uh, if you ever put Two minutes into your database and run some analysis you will see that people are pretty transparent with their sizings um dunk bet one bb and then the guy decides to check fall okay so one bb and check fall right dunk bet pretty important note so most likely his uh, dunk betting range is pretty shitty so the guy jams, and this is a random guy, right? So if the random guy jams, definitely the open shoving ranges are way stronger than ranges of uh, regular players who jump medium range, limp top range. Rec recreational players rather do the opposite, right? So they open shove stronger hands, limp medium range. Okay, not many aces, uh, high medium per, high kicker, definitely betting. Most likely we have three streets of a value in that hand, so I'm definitely C betting because there are also plenty of draws that we want to uh, start value betting from the flop. Flip here and there. Let's move on. Let's play some hands. Let's run some. Let's get some sample sizes. Obviously, the the most important, the, maybe not the most important, but for me as a Reg war lover, the most beautiful moments still are yet to come, but uh, after we'll get at least few hundred or even more hands against particular guys. So you know you can make some more adjusts uh, based on, on on someone's HUD. At, uh, yeah, King Ten. I think it's a pretty cool spot to bet and basically through our up opponent from an ace that's gonna check call the turn and fold the river. Why not? Why not? Let's do it. Let's see how our opponent reacts. The more aggressive moves, the more spots we'll see how someone is reacting to them and the more exploitments. Generally, I prefer starting with pretty aggressive um, strategy to see how people react to that. You know, you will feel more of blank spots in the HUD if you start with um, Aggressive moves. Da -da 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 -da. Two xing, definitely calling. We got a second pair, so most likely GG. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll, we'll see. It's not a board that sounds that's great for battling, especially if the turn or river will bring some seven spades and so on. These are full in our range. In battling range, for sure, there could be some semi bluffs, uh, could be even weaker nine. Uh, but I think river river range gonna be different. Okay, so obviously it's a perfect river for us. Mm. 
plenty of missed draws, so some ace highs might even check call. Definitely, this is kicker that's enough for value betting. A uh, 5B Ukraine uh, to limp or to jump. The, the more the better is the guy, the more frequently I'll jump because you know these weak guys gonna won't have as wide call as. Regs and Regs gonna, gonna gonna feel that something is suspicious. They'll smell the trap, but random guys not really. So let's go, let's go. Okay, so ten seven sounds like interesting spot to just triple battle. Uh, we're gonna get calls from queen highs, jacks, and tens that we might just. Triple off, not many aces in big blinds range, uh, not many kings uh, usually, and if, even if there are kings, there are not that many of them. So, yeah. 1.3 on small blind calling everything. We've got odds, especially there's a big blind on uh, that's gonna fold frequently, so we get odds. Right, we got to we got to flip a little bit. Flip here, flip there. Dying knights, so I think I, we can give. Uh, sounds like this guy might be might be here. Obviously, the note doesn't matter. It's just whatever note. The most important are tendencies. Tendencies, tendencies. Oh, this guy is just playing. Whether too many tables or his or he's drunk. <laughs> I mean, it's just 7 p.m., so maybe he's not drunk, but <laughs> but who knows. Somehow we make the money. <laughs> pa, 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 six high board, checking the whole range. 4.2, it's a random guy, right? So I'm, I'm gonna just jump. Not many aces, so definitely going for, for a bullet. Bit higher size, obviously. A 3.2 calling suited hands. If he calls, definitely sounds like it's a four, deuce, maybe some king five or whatever. Not many aces, so I'm totally going for a uh, for a value jam. Five, six, it's a random guy, right? So I might just jump this hand. It's, you know, this is also the thing. Remember that recre recreational players, and I actually don't, don't know this guy, but... Um, they have way tighter calling ranges, right? So, so obviously the strategy has to be adjusted accordingly. Which is basically the domain of smart spin what, and what we do, we just adjust our strategy to the reality, not not against not not to 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 what would PC do, what would super smart computer GTO powerful wizard do, but rather what are the drunk guys doing in this lovely Thursday evening uh, playing $50 games. So, a bit different than, you know, solution. Ooh, race call, 15 blinds, king 8, oh, GTO, 15 BB race call, king 8, offsuited, lots of money, lots of money, lots of money, tra la 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 la. And where's your GTO now? Mm, so, yeah, it's the same, right? There are lots of players, and you know, it's Pretty fluent, I mean, pretty fluid between reg on low stakes and, you know, fish on high stakes. And, and this is the thing, everyone plays differently. Tendencies across stakes are different. Every player has his, has different, um, different, different strategies. Could One could play very well uh, in position but very badly out of position. We need to test everyone. We need to put them into a test. We need to see where are these, um, where are these leaks, where are these tendencies. And then one could be too aggressive, another too passive. One could be too tight when it comes to uh, calling, another when it come to, comes to um, betting. Another could be very cally and so on. So this is what you need. You, you got to look for, not for you know some to do something with this or that frequency. One BB. To be honest, 
I wonder about, ah, oh, let's raise, yeah, I'll raise that, because I believe most of the time it's going to be 7 reduce, and, uh, you know, I thought that at this point we're going to get some bluffs, so we are pretty shallow, so there are not many kings, definitely going for thin raising, let's see how the guy reacts, right, this is the, this is the domain, this is my domain, Let's do funky stuff and see how the guy reacts. Let's put the guy into the test. And obviously it's like, you know, even if you make a move, you can always change your mind, you know, in the next hand, right? So this is the beauty of, of, of exploitative poker that, you know, if you run whatever exploit, it doesn't mean that you got to play like this forever. And sometimes, you know, this is the thing that you feel like your opponent might be, might be whether capped or, you know, that you have a chance to, 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 to make a move on him. You got to make a move to see the showdown or not to see the showdown. Ace Jack, so Queen 10, Queen 9, some, yeah, I think, I mean, this is actually whatever. Checking or betting both are fine. Oh, a check raise, check raise kind of sucks. Um, but on this structure, I think most of players would actually underplay their kings. I think it's a not common tendency to check raise kings, especially low, low, low kickers. So I think very frequently this is going to be just flush just so. I'm going to call, yeah, and he checked, so most likely it's a missed flash draw. Not much value, I don't see. I mean, six could be in flop check raise, but a dot it's in the barrel, so I'll just check. Okay. Okay, two Broadway check raise flash draw, bottle turn, half pot. Okay, uh, so out of position, turn to barrel. Two bottle uh, flash of fifty percent. Whatever. Um, I like making nods because even though they are like shallow or they are not bringing lots of stuff, lots of new stuff, it still improves your memory, your emotional memory to many different spots for building the the the, the game plan against particular guy. So. Even making these small notes makes you more engaged into what's going on. So I really like making notes, even if they are like, would say kind of standard because for sure there are some guys like, oh, what, why the fuck are you noting that? That's obvious. If you want to have your range balanced, you got to bottle half of your flash jaws and your toppers and so on. But most of the guys don't do that. So even noting some stuff that sounds like standard to us might not be standard for them or for many other players. So this is also pretty important to have in mind. Okay, a 10, we got some pretty nice equity said and done. Healthy on the turn, like we would do with many other blah, blah, blah. Obviously nine, seven, let's jump. Let's see how the guy reacts. And he calls, call, calls with the top of his range. Oh man, I couldn't fold that. I was on the top of my range. <laughs> Limping against Goran. Goran, okay, dokey. Let's fire the seabed and let's see what's going on. We bet and a king. King is our friend. King means that we want to triple battle. If we bet this turn, there are plenty of whatever gut shot, flash drop per flash drop per gut shot. That simply would make our opponent to call more frequently and then fold reverse. Okay, diamond sucks because most of the calling range are actually whether purple flash drop or, or gut shot flash drop. So, under, another, another option would be to, to just check. Puck, checking. If the guy bets, we can easily check raise bottom pair without redraw. We have not many turns that where we comfortably call turn bets. 
Kidoki, oh, that's a weird jump, right? 11 B eyes a shot, Jack 8 suited. So this is a pretty uh, funky jump. Let's maybe run the last two. Last two games of the evening. Last two games. Maybe I would need to check how we stand in the leaderboard. Because maybe we could do this and then 19. Oh, you guys get me more and more engaged. I got caught by uh, Poker Stars. I got caught by Poker Stars uh, gamification leaderboard. No, but for now, let's enjoy. This is the most important. Let's enjoy. Let's see who has what tendencies. Like, this is what drives me a lot. Like, just noticing these showdowns that could change our game plan, not just play the same shit over and over. Oh, bling, guys. Remember, if you want to become pro, oh, you cannot see it. I got the iLeo, which uh, gives you a notification. Uh, about blinking. Okay, so calling second, but here half pot on a side board, such a mm, situation. I think I'm gonna fold it right away. Uh, to be honest, I find it. Um, I mean, this guy was betting low size previously. Now he bets half pot. We don't have any redraw. I expect him to battle. So I think the EV of call, call, call gonna be similar to just getting rid of it. And I think it's more intuitive for, more, for most of players to just fire an ace, which are full in, in, into range, rather than um, rather than uh, air cards. Okay, firing half, jumping river, plenty of diamonds, obviously that that are here to call the turn. Plenty of gut shot, the slasher, so whatever, just tripling. Okay. And we have a check from our aggressive guy. Uh, check on the structure. Sounds like a nine, maybe. I think uh, we might get a delay. Uh, and also, if we bet the turn, we'd need to jump the river on completed boards. I think lots of players won't be so happy about doing that. Uh, check, check, bet. In double check, I see these diamonds. What are the cards would check the turn? Mm. If, if the guy has some showdown value because previously he was more aggressive. So I think I might just fold. I mean, for the for the reason of having a sample size we could call, but I think there are just value betting ranges a bit too wide. Kaczmaro, Siemano, yes, Nagrywka. Nagrywka, Nagrywka, Jack's not that frequent. Uh, there are misdraws, I think we can bet check bet or catch the river probe. So uh, yeah, and if we battle the Jack, it hits more our range. So the fold equity could be a bit higher. And now uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool. Uh, King, always good. There could be some Jacks, definitely firing. Not many cards to battle, so check raising jack seven. There are gut shots that might just play back. There are gut shots in our range that we might check raise. So definitely uh, min check raising as a minimum default to to still get some action. Oh, and heads up versus Kachmarol. Woohoo! Where's coffee? Is this coffee? No. Oh, I didn't want to throw you. A Paper towel. I wanted to throw a coffee where's coffee. I cannot see it because of the hat here. Yay. Yay. 4x ISO King 5. So bottom of limp calling range. One of these hands that we might just limp raise. Um, I'm not so sure. I from my experience, people basically ISO uh, with these big sizings bit to strong range. So I'm, I'm more of a fan of uh, approaching it bit tighter, unless obviously I, I got some data about the guy. Uh, against regular 2.5 uh, ISO, I might just limp raise this King 5. Obviously, if you play your D stakes, this is a cool thing to limp raise this King 5 uh, with some frequency, or like whatever frequency you want. Um, whether you can prepare it, calculate your strategy, uh, not to overdo it, or like at least for the sake that someone sees that you have these limp raises, because 
the sooner you will show something like that, the sooner you will get respect, obviously, if someone pays attention to showdowns, but, um, but yeah, but yeah. Okay, dry board, so see betting the range, reduce in that as well. And I think we can go to the showdown. We are ahead of other deuces. Seven might not probe the river, or it would it probe the river? I think, yeah. Also, not many flashers. I think it's a perfect board to check his flashers. So let's go to the showdown. Okay, seven, six. Ah, ah, okay, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 and flipping against catch model in very last hand. I mean, it's not a very last hand. I hope. Okay. We're good. We're good. 4.5. I think it's a call right bottom. So, whoop, 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 whoop. Eight high split. And then, ah, oh, no, it's straight. Cool, cool, cool. So, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for being here. Enjoy it. From time to time, I'll post this and that. I hope you like it. Let me know in comments. Uh, say hi. Uh, jump into the Discord and see you um, here and there, right? See you on the Discord, see you on the tables. And uh, yeah. Bye bye, guys.